there, there's a wonderful series of books by Gingery. Mm-hmm. Book one is how to make a charcoal furnace. And at the end of book seven, you have a machine shop. Okay. So it, it, nice. it, it, it's sort of how, how, how you do your own personal industrial revolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, ISRU is what NASA calls in situ resource utilization. And that's how do you go to a planet and create a civilization. Uh, ISRU has essentially assumed gingery. You go through the industrial revolution and you create the inventory of 100,000 resistors. What we're finding is the way you, the minimum building blocks for a civilization is roughly 20 parts. So what's interesting about the amino acids is they're not interesting. They're hydrophobic or hydrophilic, basic or acidic. They have typical but not extremal properties, but they're good enough you can combine them to make you. So what this is leading towards is technology doesn't need enormous global supply chains. It just needs about 20 properties you can compose to create all technology as the minimum building blocks for a technological civilization. So there's going to be 20 basic building blocks based on which the self-replicating assemblers can work. Right, and I say that not philosophically, just empirically, sort of that, that, that's where it's heading. And I like thinking about how you bootstrap a civilization on Mars, that problem. There's a fun video on bonus material for the movie where, where, where with a, a neat group of people we talk about it because it has really profound implications back here on Earth about how we live sustainably. What does that civilization on Mars looks like that's using a, a ISRU, that's using these 20 building blocks and d- does self-assembly? Yeah, go go through primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. Yeah. Um, you know, y- you, you extract properties like uh, conducting, insulating, semiconducting, uh, magnetic, uh, dielectric, um, flexural. These are the kind of, you know, roughly 20 properties. Mm-hmm. Um, with those... Those are enough for us to assemble logic, and they're enough for us to assemble actuation. Um, with logic and actuation, we can make micro robots. Mm-hmm. Um, the micro robots can build bigger robots. Um, the bigger robots can then take the building block materials and make the structural elements that you then do to make construction, and then you boot up through the stages of a technological civilization. By the way, where in the span of logic and actuation did the sensing come in? Oh, I, I skipped over that. But my favorite sensor is, is a um, step response. So if you just make a step and measure the response to the electric field, um, that ranges from user interfaces to positioning to material properties. And if you do it at higher frequencies, you get um, chemistry. Mm-hmm. And you can get all of that just from a step in an electric field. So for example, once you have time resolution in logic, something as simple as two electrodes let you do amazingly um, capable sensing. 